And so you don't have any excuse for divorce unless fornication is involved because that's the only thing that causes you to die where marriage, that marriage, is concerned. And this is why Christ was able to include that. Now, if there is no fornication and you divorce, look at, look at what you cause. Look at what you cause. You cause the person who you divorce to be in adultery. And you cause the person that marries the person that is divorced without fornication, say like, you just got upset, and I, I'm just through with this. I'm just through with it. She's off her rocker in sickness and what? Health till what? Death do you part. That's what the scripture says. I mean, that, that's... And so... Look at how much damage you cause others because of your decision. Yes. Is the only reason that Christ gave that divorce is permissible. Now, no, not because of fornication. If fornication is there, then that marriage is finished. It's over with. It's been nullified. It's okay for them to marry. Because no longer is, are they, what, married to the individual because sin has done what? Brought forth death. No, you say it's okay. Ask forgiveness. Ask forget forgiveness. So if they commit fornication and they get divorced and they come to God, it's permissible. Well, look at the intent. So you got to be held responsible for your intent. So if you say, well, the only way I'm going to get out of this marriage is to commit fornication, boom. Because remember now, listen, listen. All right. If these be remembered and faithfully discharged, speaking of these vows between the two of you made, all right, it will add to the happiness of this life, lightening by dividing this inevitable sorrow and heightening by doubling all its blessedness. But if these obligations be neglected and violated, you cannot escape the what? Keenest miseries as well as the darkest guilt. Once, once death has entered the marriage, you're free. Jesus stated that, except for the cause of what? Fornication. Sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Every man that commits fornication sinneth against what? His own body. You destroy your own body. Now, all these sins can be forgiven you. Oh, no doubt about that, you know, if you've gone out and committed fornication and, you know, You've gotten divorced and you remarried again. The first thing you need to do. See, the key is be saved. And if you're saved from sin, then all this stuff just seem doesn't affect you. That's the key. Be saved. If you're saved, the wife is saved, you don't have any problems because you're saved. The problems come when somebody in the marriage or the relationship is not saved. 
it's obvious. Because if you love the Lord, the other one loved the Lord, you got to be able to communicate and love each other because God, God is love. Now, if somebody says that they love you and they can't get along with you, then somebody ain't loving God like they ought to. If you're in God of a truth, you can't help but what? Love ye one another. And love don't work no ill. Doesn't hurt, doesn't harm, doesn't destroy. <clears throat> huh? Doesn't do anything to hurt, harm, or destroy. Amen? So sin, when it is friends, bring forth death. 16 verse says, do not err, my beloved brethren. Amen? Now, <clears throat> desertion is not an excuse for divorce. Amen? You don't have, Christ only gave one reason, and that is fornication. That's the only reason, only reason. Paul had given some advice, I think it is. First verse, 7 and 1. Let's start right there. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to what? Touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let what? In 1 Corinthians 7, chapter 2, verse. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Amen. Then he comes along and he says, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise also the wife unto the husband. So, if you're married, you have chosen to be together. You know, it's not one of these shotgun weddings. But it's a wedding that you have chosen. You have came to the conclusion that you're in love and you don't want to be apart from each other. So then what? You marry. Amen? Now, it tells us it is the duty of the husband to provide for the support of his wife, to shelter her from danger, and to cherish her a manly, manly, and unalterable affection. I did some study. Women are more interested in affection. Men are interested in the physicalness of the marriage. That's men. It is the duty of the husband. It being the command of God's word that husbands do what? Love their wives. Even as Christ loved the church and did what? And gave his own life for her. Jesus paid it all for the church. We are supposed to likewise do all for the wife. All right? Now, I said, it's the duty of the wife to reverence and obey her husband. That's something that a lot of women today have a problem with. Why is that? Why do you think a lot of women have a problem with obeying their husbands? I want the sister to answer that. Sister Coco, what would you want to answer that? 